offspring. He was a gentle and highly intelligent animal. I was truly moved by the incredible bond I witnessed between Doug and Bart. I was equally impressed by the Seuss family's commitment to preserving habitat for wildlife through their work with the Vital Ground Foundation. Now the Seusses have welcomed two new grizzlies to their family. Join me as we look back at Little Bart and Honey Bump's remarkable first year. Growing Up Grizzly is the story of this wonderful family where humans and bears live together in mutual love and respect. Even though it's only been eight months, I can't imagine life without him. I don't want to train bear. A relationship with grizzlies interests me. That's my passion. It was very unique growing up. It's very different to come home to a grizzly bear. This is Honey. She's the female. <laughs> I guess she's not camera shy. That's a good sign. Honey Bump and Little Bart are four-month-old grizzly bears. Just wind in the wind. Oh, he went sticky to camera. I'm not camera shy either. <laughs> that was a grizzly bear charge. <laughs> they just arrived at Doug and Lynn Seuss's home, nestled in the Wasatch Mountains of Utah. The Seusses raised their children here. Now their parenting skills are focused on Little Bart and Honey Bump. The brother and sister cubs are incredibly lucky to be here. Just two weeks earlier, they were fighting for survival. About a week ago came the phone call that there was um, a tragedy. I call it a tragedy. Their mother had been shot. Almost three days later, they found these little cubs. On a steep mountainside in Alaska, a hunter shot and killed the cub's mother just outside their den. Alaska State Troopers realized there were cubs still inside the den, so they called biologist Brad Scotton to help get them out. They flew me up to this den site with the request that I come along to help handle the cubs and take them out of their den because they hadn't had experience doing that before. Scotton didn't know what he might find. Helpless baby bears or older cubs, which would be extremely dangerous. And the cubs were backed up in a tight ball on top of each other, basically. And as I crawled in, I was wearing welder's gloves to protect myself from their claws and teeth. Um, they had all sorts of energy and did not want to be captured, that's, that's for sure. But this was their only hope. Such young bears can't survive in the wild without their mother. Based on their size, the cubs were estimated to be about three and a half months old. Fortunately, when Trooper Greg Fisher saw them, they stole his heart. Rather than send them on another two-hour flight to Anchorage and then work on finding somebody to take them, I told them, uh, after checking with my wife, that we were more than happy to take them until we find a home for them. But Greg and his wife, Mally, didn't know what they were getting into. I thought that the cubs would be very small, you know, things you could cuddle. The Fishers soon found themselves feeding and caring for the very lively cubs around the clock. We had them in our kids' toy room. They'd run around there and tear toys up and play. And then eventually we let them run into the main house. And they'd just get into whatever mischief they could. Within a week, the Fishers had become very attached to their wild foster children. But the cubs were becoming too much to handle. Even though they were small, it was an amazing thing how strong they already were. The Fishers knew that orphan grizzly cubs usually end up at a zoo but they thought of another option. The very first day, we were joking, and we were like, wouldn't it be cool if Bart the Bear owner took the cubs? And that was like the big kind of joke, and we thought that would never happen. But wouldn't that be neat? Having heard about Doug and Lynn Seuss's expertise in raising grizzlies, Greg gave them a call. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've had lots of animals and lots of pets, but I've never come attached and so overwhelmed by two animals as much as these two. The Seusses submitted an adoption application, along with the necessary wildlife permits, to the Alaskan Department of Fish and Game. The application was approved. It was tough for the fishers to say goodbye, but they knew the cubs couldn't ask for a better place to call home. I feel like it's a bit of a miracle that they're here, because certainly they would have starved to death without their mother. And we have to teach them everything 
their mother would teach them. Do you like your tummy scratched? I'd like to scratch it for you. When it comes to raising grizzly bears, Doug and Lynn Seuss know what they're talking about. They adopted their first grizzly 24 years ago. That bear grew up to become a 1,500 pound star named Bart. Look at this, he wants to play, watch this. Bart was my mentor. He taught me and we learned and progressed together. So it was an intense, immensely rewarding experience. <laughs> it's fun, I'll tell you that. This is fun. Sometimes I knew what he was thinking when I wasn't even facing him. That comes from years of building a relationship. With Honey Bump and Little Bart, the Seuss family is venturing into new territory. Big Bart had been adopted at just five weeks old. These cubs spent their first three months in the wild. The Seusses had never tamed truly wild orphan grizzly bears like these two. And they're not absolutely sure it's possible. Right now, we're just going to take it real easy. The first step is to earn their trust. Did you see it back off there? Oh, sorry. Did I make a mistake? Pushing you too hard? Oh, good boy. They have to be treated with respect, as much respect as you would treat another human being. We're not training these bears. We are raising them. And in raising them, yes, you are teaching. And teaching them trust and communication. <laughs> He's a good, good. While Doug works with the cubs, Lynn tends to another member of the family who needs a little extra attention right now. This is Tank. And he is a five-year-old grizzly. And Tank is like if if you've ever had like a three or four year old and you bring home a new baby, and Tank is feeling a little bit like maybe um, jealousy, a little bit uh, insecure. It'll take a while for Tank to get used to the cubs. In the meantime, Doug can't afford to neglect them. Oh, good boy. His philosophy for building a relationship with grizzlies is based on intense interaction and positive reinforcement. Doug's first challenge in the bonding process is to make eye contact. All right. Come here. Look at him look me right in the eye, which is something I've been trying to achieve for about three days. It's so important to have a bear look you in the eye with confidence because by not looking them in the eye, a sub bear will defer to a dominant bear. And to have that eye contact builds a trust and a communication. Ultimately, the deepest bond between bear and human requires mutual trust. To achieve this, Doug has invented some unconventional techniques. Trying to blow in their nose, uh, because blowing in their nose uh, is... You're a good boy. There's something about your soul when you breathe into the nose of the animal that they inhale your inner feelings. Doug and Lynn spend many hours every day giving each cub individual attention in separate cages. This gets them used to being away from each other and helps them bond with their new human family. Right now we're just um, kind of like big chewy toys. Now, obviously, when she's 700 pounds, I'm not going to just let her chew on me anytime she wants. But right now, it's just like you do with a puppy, just kind of like, uh-uh, you know, you don't bite me that hard. Oh, come here. Doug's next step is to begin lead training with a chain. If I want to take him on walks, as an older animal, we want to go swimming together, or we want to go for a hike up in the mountains together, there will be times when I have to put him on a lead. We'll just put this around here and make it a game out of it. Put it around your neck here and see how this does. Oh, yeah. You're a good boy. <laughs> After several hours apart, Honey Bump and Little Bart are reunited for a little brother-sister romp session. She's like, where is he? Where's your brother? She still thinks he's in there. It's 
very difficult to tell the cubs apart at this young age. Honey's snout is a little longer and thinner than Bart's. Her white collar, which they have as young cubs, is more pronounced than his. And Bart's body is slightly rounder than his sister's. Little Honey now, I mean, she's a pistol. She's very, very bright, and she's very, very agile. She's a little more delicate than little Bart is just, you know, oh, just comes at you like a little bull. After two hours of nonstop carousing, the cubs finally begin to tire. Nap time. This crate is like security. It's very enclosed and therefore feels quite a bit like a den. If they were still in Alaska, the cubs would be starting to explore the world outside the den. But just as they do here, they'd occasionally return to the den for a safe place to rest. She's making a nest, getting that straw there. Life in Utah is very different, but the cubs do have a secure and loving home and each other. These cubs have become part of our family, and it didn't take very long at all. We've fallen in love with them, and I want to take the absolute best care in the world uh, of them, and they are. They're, they're seuses. <laughs> The Seuss's love for animals goes back to both Doug and Lynn's earliest memories. As a child, I was in the woods taking care of orphan squirrels. Dad benched me in baseball for catching butterflies in Little League. Soon after they were married, Doug and Lynn started training animals for the movies. We started with wolves, and I think we had a lot of little animals, raccoons and coyotes and skunks, and so we were trying desperately to make a living doing what we loved, and all the time our parents were saying, you have got to get a real job. Instead, Doug pursued his greatest desire, to adopt a Kodiak grizzly. Relatives and friends had a hard time understanding why he chose the largest and wildest of all bears. Nobody thought it was a great idea except myself to get a Kodiak. The Seusses adopted five-week-old Bart from a zoo that didn't have the facilities to keep him. The tiny cub arrived just days before Lynn gave birth to their daughter, Sasha. It was almost like raising twins. I would remember which one I was nursing and which one I was bottle feeding. <laughs> they just grew up together. Of course, Sasha didn't grow quite as fast as Bart. By the age of nine, Bart weighed 1,500 pounds and stood nine and a half feet tall. And he and Doug had developed a bond closer than anyone thought possible between human and grizzly bear. You're a good boy. You're good. For two decades, Bart thrived and established his reputation as the most magnificent bear in cinema history. He's been in movies a lot of, <laughs> Bart, <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's been in a lot of movies. Uh, Bart's played in films like uh, The Bear, The Great Outdoors, White Fang, Legends of the Fall. You're good. Then at age 23, he was diagnosed with cancer. They told us he had two months to live. And for a year and a half, that's all we did was take care of him. And he was okay for a year and a half. But it's like he hung on until we had something to fill that big old hole that was gonna be left. But then when those cubs got here, it was like he felt like it was okay, he could go, that we'd be all right. Bart passed away just two weeks after the Cubs' arrival. I have to consider these little guys a, a godsend. Whenever we get real teary-eyed over thinking about our beloved Bart, the best medicine in the world is just to go hop in that bear cage with those babies. And um, it's like, yeah, here we go again. Here's where we were 23 years ago. This is life at its greatest. <laughs> I love this, actually. 
The Seuss's knew the wounds had really begun to heal when Doug decided to name the male cub after Bart. I was reluctant to name another animal Bart the bear, but he proved so precocious and intense and demanding of attention, effusive, he was worthy of Bart the bear's namesake. Bart is definitely a roughhouse bear. He just likes extreme contact, extreme hard interaction. <laughs> Bump is very intelligent. She's always thinking. She has endless amounts of energy. I call her my best bear girlfriend. Alrighty. Now that Sasha's grown up, she plays a big part in raising Honey Bump and Bart. Oh, you're good. You're good. My daughter has intense, great sense of timing. She's a natural. She already knows what they're thinking before sometimes they even think it. Oh, oh. Easy. You can't be beside a bear and be thinking about, after I'm done wrestling with this bear, I'm gonna go to the coffee shop. Oh. You have to be totally 100% emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually there with that animal. Mm, I love you so much. Yes, I do. Meanwhile, Tank, the family's five-year-old grizzly, is feeling much better. The passage of a few weeks and a lot of extra attention have helped Tank understand that the new cubs aren't going to take his place. Tank is the sweetest little grizzly bear, I think, that walks the earth. He was just born that way. Yes, I've always kind of referred to him as a cocker spaniel in a bear suit. <laughs> when I came up to Utah to meet the cubs, Doug made sure I paid attention to Tank, too. So I got much closer to an 800-pound grizzly bear than I ever thought I would. All you got to do is, sh is throw your energy, stay with me, and just, oh, you're oh, good, good, boy. <laughs> Sit down, just you're feel good. Me. You're good. You're good, boy. You're good, boy. Oh, Tank. Yeah. Hey, Tank, head down. Head. Head. Oh, good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Oh, good. Yes, good. All right, good boy. Yes. Good. Good. Good boy. Good boy, yes. Good boy. Good. Yes, good. Good boy. He likes people. Oh, good boy. Being kissed by a huge grizzly was a little unnerving. But at that moment, there was only he and I in the world, and it was an experience I'll never forget. Let me just say, that's all right. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a head trip. Sweet. <laughs> Look who's here! It's sister! Honey Bump and Bart are now four and a half months old and ready for their next adventure. Oh, oh they love each other! Oh. Going downtown for ice cream. <laughs> it's a little brother and sister! The trip will be fun. First trip to town. But it's also a chance to expose the cubs to the sights and sounds of human society, which they'll need to be comfortable with for work in the movies. All these civilized sounds are going to be part of their life. And they have to adapt and be able to positively cope with the civilized world. The potentially frightening experience will be offset by plenty of positive reinforcement. For their first trip into town, the cubs stay amazingly calm, and the ice cream is a big hit. She won't eat her cones, though. Oh, it's a hard time in your life, isn't it? Learning all this stuff. You did a good job, darling. The cubs are growing fast, gaining a pound or more a day. 
At five months old, Honeybump weighs about 75 pounds, and Bart, more than 100. To keep pace with their appetites, the Seuses feed them around 10 pounds of food daily. I don't think a great big man could begin to put away what they're putting away in a day. They're just like little bottomless pits. Their diet consists of raw chicken, fruit, vegetables, and occasional treats like dried fruit snacks. Yes, it looks like raw flesh. They enjoy just about everything. Although, like many children, Honey Bump refuses to eat her broccoli. Being able to feed the cubs by hand is proof of the incredible progress made in less than two months since the cubs' arrival. This was the tame one, and I do it with every animal. I think it's critical that that the hand, the trust that you can build by them doing this, eating on your lap. Besides food, another natural love for grizzly bears is water. So far, the cubs have only played in kiddie pools. Today, they'll get their first real swimming lesson. Doug has decided to first bring Bart down to the pond alone. He often lets the cubs experience new situations separately, so they develop confidence even when apart. Today will be his first day in the pond. Now the pond is way over his head, and I'm sure there's an instinct, and he'll know how to just to paddle those little bare legs, but he's never done it before. In the cool, refreshing pond, little Bart is discovering his natural instincts. Just as a bear in the wild would forage for food, he starts digging. They sure like that mud. He uses the muscular hump on his back for power. The hump is a, is a massive muscle, and they are excavators by nature, so that muscle is critical to being able to, to uh, overturn massive boulders and dig up large areas of earth. Just a few hours after Bart learned he could swim, it's Honey Bump's turn. But being more timid than her brother, Doug has decided to bring Bart along as well. I see Bart as being robust, freewheeling, curious, self-confident, and Bump is very serene, likes to be with people, does not have the self-confidence that Bart has at this point. <laughs> Little Bart and Honey Bump and Laurel and Hardy. <laughs> With her brother there for moral support, Honey forgets her fears and dives right in. As much as they love swimming and digging, it's obvious what excites Honey Bump and Bart the most. Just being together. Sometimes grizzly bears stay with their mother three and a half years. The brothers and sisters or siblings may stay together for six, seven, eight years. We are prolonging that through their lifetime. Doug and Lynn Seuss have always had a deep love for grizzly bears and all wildlife. But it wasn't until the original Bart became a successful movie star that they were in the position to make a difference. In 1990, they started the Vital Ground Foundation, which buys private lands and conservation easements critical to the survival of grizzly bears. Vital ground occurred because when you have the means to do something, it would be sad if one did not act on it. Bart gave us the opportunity to provide for his wild brothers and the whole natural world. By preserving habitat for grizzlies, vital ground also protects the wildlife around them. The grizzly is like an umbrella species if the land is wild enough for the grizzly, then everything else is okay. The key is identifying the most critical areas of bear habitat to protect. Vital ground targets land that links already protected portions of wilderness. This allows bears to cross from one area to another safely, 
breeding and keeping the wild population healthy. It just seemed totally natural that the way that we could give back to our animals here would be to give back to their wild brothers. Up. Good. Look. Walk. Walk. Good boy. Walk. For Tank, it's time to get to work. The Seusses have just received word that Tank's been cast in his first leading movie role in Dr. Doolittle 2. Look. Doug and Lynn's eldest son, Clint, will help prepare Tank for filming, slated to begin in Los Angeles in two months. Oh, good. Even with the new focus on Tank, the Seusses make sure the cub's crucial development continues uninterrupted. Between six and eight months old, they experience their biggest growth spurt, nearly doubling in weight. During this time, Doug continually introduces the cubs to new situations and places, always with the element of play. I'm so happy with them and, and, and enjoy them so much, uh, playing every day. That's part of the process. Storyboards for Dr. Doolittle 2 have arrived, and Tank is rehearsing daily. He seems to know that he, not the cubs, is now the star. Tank will know he's the center of attention. I've never had a bear that didn't love the attention. And ready, look, and up. Good boy, stay. And sidestep, side, good, side, good, sidestep, good, sidestep. Good boy, all right. Oh, good. Good, and up, good. And sidestep, 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 good. Side good. good. All right. Good. Good. All right. Are you ready to go to California, huh? Are you ready to go? During the Cubs' first year, Doug doesn't want to miss a single day of interaction. So Honey Bump and Bart are going to Hollywood, too. Since the cubs have a natural fear of older male bears, Doug is keeping them separate from Tank. They travel in one trailer, and Tank gets his own. When we're on the road, we do our best to make the trailers look very benign, like we're just hauling horses. Hard to imagine at one time, there were grizzly bears in Los Angeles. On the Hollywood set of Dr. Doolittle 2, Tank's getting into character. Come on, Tank, get in your chair. He plays Archie, a show business bear who's reintroduced to the wild to save a threatened forest. Good boy. Oh, good boy. Today, Tank's filming on a blue screen stage. In the finished movie, the blue will be replaced by footage that makes it appear he's zooming along on a scooter. Say bye-bye. Good boy. Tank performs like a seasoned pro, and even seems to enjoy it. He responds to the audience, and if everybody, yeah, good, good, he really picks up on that. Honey Bump and Bart need their own work and play space, so the studio has set up a small bear compound in a corner of the lot. This will be home for the next three months. The setting's in stark contrast to the peace and quiet of Utah. We get three or four sirens a day, screeching brakes, honks. The very first day we got here, they were like, oh my gosh, what was that? But now it's like, well, that went by and nothing happened and I'm okay. Although the Seuss's sleep in a nearby apartment, they arrive at daybreak to greet oh. Tank and the Cubs. You're a good girl. Oh, come here, give me your nose. I want to blow in it. They're very excited to see us every morning. <laughs> they know it's time to get out and play in the water and get their grapes and apples and carrots and good foods. 
Today, the cast and crew of Dr. Doolittle 2 have moved to a shooting location in the mountains. Honey Bump and Little Bart are now eight months old and brimming with energy. This break from life at the studio gives them a chance to blow off steam. For Dr. Doolittle 2's producers, Honey Bump and Bart's irresistible performance in the woods is better than any audition. They decide to add a cameo appearance for the Cubs in the film's final scene. After a week in the mountains, it's back to the studio lot for the remainder of shooting. Good boy! Each time Tank arrives on set, he has Good to keep his boy, focus Tank. on his trainers. Oh, Not an easy task for a grizzly bear with extraordinary senses. Good boy! Whether you see him look at it or not, you know, you bring him in, and okay, he checks everything out. There's a sandbag there, there's a sea stand, oh, there's a camera, there's... Oh, I got a different camera assistant today. I can see him notice that. He's got to turn this way, right? There's the tank. That's good. It looks, it looks like a trepidation. During this afternoon's filming, Tank's ability and his bond with the Seuss's are put to the test. When technical problems require dozens of takes for a key shot, he continues to respond long after the rewards of food and play have lost their appeal. He's come through to the point where he's just, he knows you want him to do it. He's not hungry, he's tired, he's sick of playing, but he actually does it because you want him to and he knows that. I've seen him actually dig down and go, all right, if you want me to do it again, I'll do it for you. Cut. To make sure Tank knows they appreciate his extraordinary effort, the Seuss's give him an extra special reward his favorite way to relax, taking a soak in a big tub of water. This is good for him, just relaxing. Oh, look at that big girl bear. On top of their often grueling schedule with Tank, Doug and Lynn keep working with the Cubs every day. I'd say one day in this first year of their life is truly as important as maybe two weeks next year. So after we do whatever we need to do with Tank, it's at least eight hours daily with them. Bart and Honeybump have been with the Seusses just seven months, but already they've learned an astonishing number of behaviors. The bears are so intelligent that little Bump and little Bart learn in one repetition. They can know, and it's ingrained, it's indelible for the rest of their life. Bump, why? White, white, good. Here, Bump, come easy. Far more difficult than teaching behaviors oh, is teaching them patience, a quality oh, grizzly bears rarely oh, exhibit in the wild. Uh, uh, look. During lead training, Doug shows Honey Bump a cold oh. drink. See, the tenseness of her body, that's because she wanted that immediately. He then puts it back in his pouch and makes her wait. I attach the chain. And then I reach back into my pouch, and I pull out the drink, and I open it, and then I give it to her. I don't think anybody comprehends what an accomplishment that is for a grizzly bear. You're so oh. nice. Oh, you're a good girl. At 10 months old, Bart has grown considerably larger than his sister. Weighing nearly 300 pounds, he's become a formidable wrestling partner for Doug. Doug is extremely physical with the bears. He's a big old physical bear himself. His spirit and his energy just comes like that to the bear and the bear loves it. Not only do they understand it, they thrive on that physical energy and that heavy duty contact. What? 
But sometimes, Bart's enthusiasm makes him a little too rough. When that happens, Doug has to regain the upper hand. In the process, they must know that you have control over them, that they must have manners and must do what they are told to do. Bart, off. Get off. All Doug needs to do is use a stern tone, and Bart relents. Usually. Doug, just a little cop. It's just a little baby. <laughs> the Seuss's final day of filming for Dr. Doolittle 2 will be their most unpredictable because it's Honey Bump and Little Bart's first time before the cameras. They play Tank's children in the movie's final scene. We've had two prep days that they've been able to see this set. Uh, we were a little bit concerned that maybe they would be a little bit nervous, but not at all. On those two prep days, they just had a ball tearing up the set. Today is actually the first day that the cameras will be rolling. This is, this is their big day. We're rolling, not the back way. Unlike Tank, the Cubs are novices, and they don't always hit their marks. But the fact that they can perform on a movie set at all is amazing. They've come a long way, from orphan babies in Alaska to up-and-coming Hollywood stars. What were the chances that those little wild ones who were born in the wild, who lost their mommy, who almost starved to death, they will be in a big film studio making a movie? They handled all the stress, all the, all the things that we did earlier it proved to be of great merit because they went on to a soundstage with lights and cameras, a lot of activity, and they performed well. I'm really proud of them. Shake. Oh, good. Shake. Oh. After three months in L.A., Doug and Lynn are more than ready to return home. When the Cubs return to Utah, a new world awaits them. Winter has come to the Wasatch Mountains. Tank is very familiar with winter weather, but for the Cubs, it's a radical change of scenery. This will be Bart and Honeybump's first time in the snow. Cool. Come on. Come on, girl. First. During the past few months, the cubs have changed a lot. Honeybump has grown bolder than her brother. When she reaches the deep snow, she doesn't hesitate, but jumps right in. Bart isn't so sure. Look at that. Oh, is he afraid? Look at that. Deep, He's afraid. Bart. <laughs> oh. Bart, instead of just running full-fledged long into the snow like Bump did, he tested his waters. So they have different personalities like humans do. Oh, good. Some things haven't changed. The cubs still love to wrestle, and Honey Bump's more agile than ever. She is a ballerina bear. She can just spin circles around him. When they get into their down and out wrestling, he can use his weight, but she can outmaneuver him very, very well. Just eight months ago, Doug and Lynn didn't know if their first attempt to tame wild orphan grizzlies would be a success. But seeing them now, it's clear the cubs are thriving, and the Seusses are very proud parents. Good fall. You're good. You're good. Hey, Bart. Here, Bart. Come here. Sasha, who stayed home during the filming of Dr. Doolittle 2, is amazed at how much Honey Bump and Bart have grown over the past three months. At first, she watches from the sidelines, but she's anxious for a reunion. I want you to come with me. I will. Sasha starts off with Bart. She'll have to take things slowly, because he's gained nearly 100 pounds since she last interacted with him. All right, here. Get your own feel. 
<laughs> you, oh, he's, <laughs> your feel's oh, yeah, very good, Sasha. You you got great feel. Oh, I saw you try to get my foot. I saw that. Good boy. Oh, good. Oh, good. Look, that's all my weight. Sasha's quickly overwhelmed by Bart's strength. <laughs> hey, Dad, I need your help. Tell him, say off. I mean it. Say off. Off, Bart. Good. 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 There's no doubt that her father is her mentor. And uh, there's nobody else in the world that better that she could learn from. You are good. Sasha's uneasy about interacting with the powerful cub. Okay, use your but Doug body. talks you her through it. No, I'm not physically strong enough to hold my ground like you're saying. Well, plant. Psychologically hold your ground. It isn't all physical. Psychologically hold okay, your ground. I'm okay, I'm not doing that. Okay, don't think about it. You've got to go in and be one with the bear. <sighs> Get behind him. Right now. Get on him. Good. Good boy. Okay, boy. take a deep breath. Internalize. With Doug's guidance, Good. Sasha makes a breakthrough. Tonight. And she and Bart renew their bond. Okay, I see what you're... You feeling it coming back? Yeah. Oh, I'm look at that. I'm you. Get him. I'm going down. Get down. you. See, now there. Got him. Good. Oh. Good. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> see the head throw? That's... He loves you. Oh, see God. that? Good. Doug wants to capture the cub's first playtime in the snow on videotape from his close-up perspective. So he's rigged a camcorder to a helmet. <laughs> good! Oh, good! Good! Oh, good! Right. Good! Oh, good! Good! There we have a close-up of what it's like to kiss a grizzly bear right on the lips. Look at that strength. Somersault, somersault, oh, good, good, white, good, good, good. <laughs> You're cool. As they near their first birthday, it's apparent Honey Bump and Bart have adjusted well to their new home and human family. Yet they still display the magnificence of the wild grizzly. He's just the epitome of pure, majestic oh, wildness. Oh, cool. Carl Young said that Inside each of us is a bear with glowing eyes. I mean, there's some kind of real ancient and a little bit mystical connection we have with bears. The big day has arrived. It's Bart and Honeybump's first birthday. Well, this is gonna be probably the world's healthiest birthday cake. Doug and Lynn have invited family and friends over to celebrate, complete with presents and carrot cake. Even their youngest son, Jed, has flown home from college to be here. Everyone gathers up the presents and cakes, which they'll bring outside to the cubs. Just make sure you give them the teddy bear and not the puppy. OK. <laughs> here we go. Everybody got their present? Hi, Bart. Hi, Bart. Happy birthday, Bart. And just put it right by his cake. Happy birthday, Bart. Woo! Little Bart gets his goodies first. Come on. Come here. Are you happy? Are you happy? Yay. Come on, Jacob. Good boy. Happy birthday. Here comes Bob. Now it's Honey Bump's turn. Good girl. Happy birthday, Bumpy. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Oh, Bumpy. 
her so good. It didn't take her long to oh, find the cake. Good girl. Good girl. Happy birthday. For Doug and Lynn, Bart and Honeybump's first birthday is not just a time to celebrate, but to reflect on a remarkable year. It's gone by pretty fast. Really, it's just been eight months that we've had them. It's, it's been, been an amazing a year. The taming process is continuous, but that formulative year is under our belt. It's been a year of both immense joy and intense grief. I miss Bart. Yeah. There'll never be a time we don't. Never. You know. He started everything. Yeah. Let's just. He's uh, a, uh, he was I, my mentor. Yeah. He was. He did everything for us. He did. He put my kids through college, you know, and he started Vital Ground. And he gave us the inspiration to carry on the work for his wild brothers. And there'll never be a time, probably, that we don't get a little tear when we think of him. Bart mentored Doug well. And now, the legacy of that great bear is being passed on to Tank and to the family's newest additions, Little Bart and Honeybump. I'd like the legacy of our bears, all of them put together, to be able to show people through their movie roles, through documentaries, through people coming here, that to look into the eye and the soul of a grizzly bear and see what a magnificent creature they truly are. Thanks to Doug and Lynn Seuss, we've had that opportunity to look a grizzly in the eye. I feel fortunate to have met Bart the Bear. And it's been awesome to meet little Bart and Honey Bump. These remarkable cubs are a testament of our deep connection with nature and our responsibility to keep the earth wild enough for the grizzly bear. On Saturday, get up close and personal with the deadliest animals that rely on venom to subdue their prey when Richard Moorcroft goes wild with Ultimate Killers, 6.30 Saturday night on ABC. But stay with us now for Late Line. Scientists are a strange lot. Who else would jump at the chance to spend half a year on a remote freezing island? In six months, there are only two sunny days. And why would they want to anyway? I think everybody's heard about climate change by now. It's places like this, the subpolar and the polar regions, that are actually experiencing the greatest warming. Join an intriguing expedition. The marine debris that I find comes from a lot of places around the world. Heard Island, 10 o'clock next Thursday. He's an American icon. An esteemed film critic once wrote that somewhere within that man is the best of us. His extraordinary career began 50 years ago. Maybe I found a sense of family when I got up on the stage. Now, meet the man behind the legend. The tragedy in my life was the loss of a son. In celebration of the life of Gregory Peck, 9.30 Saturday. Compelling events in history on video. Available from ABC Shops, ABC Centres, Video Retailers and ABC Online. It's very difficult when a, a, a loved member of the family just drops out of your life. 
She was a wife, a mother, a sister and a daughter. And she's just basically been taken off the, the planet. She's also happened to be married to a high profile league star. Well, I'm not so sure if I'm in all that big of a hurry to get back to Possum Place. So, Badea, I think our duty here is clear. Why don't we get started on this pancake? Good idea, sir. Well, shouldn't we get this criminal back to the Happy Meadows Enchanted Maximum Security Prison and uh, back to Possum Place? Well, not right away, Obadiah. Why not, sir? Because we'll never fit through that door. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Remember, kids, hot water burns like fire. So get Mum and Dad to check the bath before you hop in. Message from Dooper. When Wendy nominated Maggie for Australia's Worst Driver, she didn't expect it would be quite this scary. But because Maggie doesn't only destroy cars, she can make them fly. Australia's Worst Driver, Sunday. <laughs> I, the evil Dr. Peacock, will steal two cans color with my color ray. <laughs> Boys, how about a little breakfast? The cereal color is disappearing. Yours too, Uncle Toucan. Oh, my. Where did the color go? What do we do? You can help get Toucan Sam's color back by cracking the code on specially marked boxes of Kellogg's Fruit Loop cereal. Log on to the website to find out more. I say, help. Hmm. The stolen treasure should be here. <laughs> Ancient challenge. <laughs> to win back Imla, Eriba, Ranja, Okonga, and Onokta, you must crack this code. Can you help Paddle Pop Lion? Visit the Paddle Pop website to crack the ancient code. Paddle Pop Kingdom's five ancient treasures, only available for a limited time from streets. What are you doing, Uncle Gaffer? I'm having a tetley moment, you see. I tried out stuff like yoga, it didn't work for me. I found my inner balance in a cup of gently tea. I took up meditation, stress balls and tai chi. Did they work? No, I found rejuvenation in a cup of gently tea. <laughs> it's a happy, easy, natural way to make ourselves refreshed. If well-being's what you're after, then a cup of gently's best. Gently, that's my cup of tea. It's a long way to the top, and at the top, there were sky hooks. Now, 30 years on, 16 classic hits. Everybody's wearing blue jeans. Hook after hook after hook. Sky hooks, 16 greatest hits in store now. Wednesday. A special surprise for one of Canberra's bushfire heroes. He helped so many, now we're helping him. From the ashes, we're creating a garden of colour. It will be absolutely beautiful. A ground force event, Wednesday. Welcome back, everybody. All right, it's time right now for Dooper's Race. Let's see if we can get you a win, Dooper Dog, while you guys watch Text in Star. Here we go, come on. to the safe, stolen by the wrong riders, no matter what Rongo did to him. Frustrated, but not without another plan to get the safe open, Rongo and his wrong riders rode off, thinking that they had finally disposed of Tex Tinstar once and for all. There's no way Tinstar can get out of that one. Yeah. How are we gonna stop this ding dang dad blame thing, Tinks? I don't know, Chief. It doesn't look good. We need something we can use as a break of some kind. What about him? Good thinking, my aromatic friend. Quick, chew off my ropes. Ah! 
It didn't work. Oh, that was mighty close. Sure was, Tex. Good thing that Tenderfoot was on board. Yeah, we would have had to have used you if he wasn't. I figured that. Come on, faithful and whiffy chafe. Let's get out of this wagon. Come on, Chick. Let's get that dandy out of that cactus. Right behind you, Team Star. Say, Tex, wasn't that? Yep, I think it was, Chief. Well, I'll be a ding dong dingity dern dang dong dingy thingy. That city dude is really something, takes. It doesn't look like that dude is gonna be able to hang on much longer, Chief. How in the name of all creation are we gonna get him out of this predicament, Tex? Tex, okay. Quiet, Chief, I'm a thinking. I think this might pert there be pretty important, Tex. Chief, don't bother me now. I gotta think of something heroic. Tex, you're standing on a diamond back rattlesnake. Plum on him. Plum smacked a right on him. Well, I, I ain't gonna hurt him none. But he's all flawed. No! Sorry, Floyd. Wow! Oh, what a strange sensation with the stepping. Oh, Tex and the smelly deputy. What are you doing all the pert near way up, pert near here, pert yonder with the perting? No time to explain, my little poison pal. I need your help. We gotta rescue that tenderfoot hanging by his teeth over the cliffside. Ooh, sharp sure thing, Tex. I... Whoa! <laughs> Percy, grab a hold of Floyd. Howdy, Mr. Sissy Man. So, as Texan Chief put their brave rescue plan into effect, we turn our attention to the Wrong Riders and the burning question, why weren't they in today's episode? What do you mean by today's episode? Oh, sorry. We now join the Wrong Riders as they approach the peaceful, tranquil, sleepy town of Lost Dangalus. I say, Rongo, what on earth are we doing here? It's here that we will be able to call upon the services of one crusty rust knuckle, the best safecracker in all the West. So the Wrong Riders went to find the infamous safecracker. And what of Tex, Chafe, and the dainty Percy Lace Daisy? Tex has the situation well in hand, but what else would one expect? What do we do now, Tex? I don't know if this was such a good idea. Tune in next week for the next cat waxing, car washing, tax paying adventure of Tex Tinstar, the best in the West. Well, we've had a great time here at the Bush Rally Billy Cars, haven't we, Dooper Dog? And you had a great race as well. It's a pity you rolled over, but never mind. You, do, you have fun, didn't you? Make sure you enter that competition uh, to win a PlayStation 2. And our letter of the week as well, still up and running. Thank you, everybody, for making this feel so very welcome here at Barra Couple. And see you guys next week for the Peter's Saturday Club. It's WA for Kids. Dooper's going to go and have more fun. See you guys. In case you missed last night's cash three numbers, they were zero, eight, and two. Cash three. Why not try a slick pick? He was a dreamer. And a little schemer. Hmm. I thought he might live in a dog's life. But when he'd hear the bell for school, Start one day he says, I'll take a chance. Crazy things for a therapist. In a glance, who becomes his favorite pastime? I have buried a bone for the last time. He said, I want to be a boy. Oh, he's a over just being a I got to be a boy. Yeah, we just that's going to be a boy. Turns out he's a regular Einstein, and Leonard is treading a fine line. Why can't I be a normal kid like any other?
Mr. Jim Shorts. I don't know. I... You know today is the Vip Patootie. You don't want to miss the Vip Patootie, do you? No, I don't want to miss the Vip Patootie. I love the Vip Patootie. Oh. <laughs> oh, I hate the Vip Patootie. Excuse me, but are you going to tell me what this Rooty Shubooty means? Or are you just going to keep torturing me here? It's Vip Patootie, the Vice President's Fitness Test of the Year. It's a stupid thing where they make you climb ropes and run around a big obstacle course. It's strictly for jocks. Ooh, a triple sow cow with a Fosbury flop. And a naturally talented dog. Morning, Lenny. Any luck finding the gym shorts you lost on purpose? Come on, I didn't lose my shorts on purpose. I must have just misplaced them somewhere. Found them. They were crammed into a coffee can in the back of the freezer. Hey, Mr. Jolly! Fat in a fursuit, come out! The coast is clear! The news is on! <laughs> Where are you, Jolly? Jolly! Mr. Jolly! Jolly! And in other news, the East Westland cat burglar has struck again. Cat burglar? Mr. Jolly's been burgled. Who would steal a poor, innocent cat? Who would want that hairball? Doesn't matter, he's gone. I gotta get help! I gotta get let in a spot! Uh, there are a few pleasures so underestimated. Don't you agree, pretty boy? Pretty boy? Pretty boy? Pretty! Fred! Here to watch TV. Oh no! What if the cat got him? Oh, that's me. Ah! I've got to get help. I've got to get Leonard and Spot. <laughs> oh, ah, outside bed. Must overcome fears. This is one heck of a school. Where's all the darn kids? Today, you will be pushed to the very limit of human endurance as you punish your bodies in the pursuit of athletic excellence. Because never forget, a fit body is the sign of a fit mind. Uh, 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 fit mind, fit mind, fit body is a sign of... I've lost my place. Lost your cat, too, dude. <laughs> <laughs> my poor Tallulah! You're in charge till I get back. Okay, PB. That was a momentary setback. Gotta find Leonard so we can save Mr. Jolly. It's about the cat. All about the cat. I didn't know they were serving canary for lunch today. Just so you know, before you eat me, I was recently diagnosed with salmonella. Time to say goodbye. Hello, Leonard? Oh, well, he's obviously not here in this empty, dark, scary hallway, so I'll just skid along home, which I promise I will never leave again. Okay, now, um, students must climb the giant rope using wrist over hand action combined with vertically directed knee shinning. I wonder what that is. Like this? <laughs> Very good, Scott. That's it. I'm blowing this pop stand before I get myself. Gotta make it to the top. Go for a go. Leonard. Leonard. I'm pretty sure first you have to you have to touch the rope. Come on, son, you can do it. Great start! Fantastic start! What a way to begin! That's just I'll stop embarrassing you now. Oh great. A dark and closed space. Okay, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it! I can! Baby. Ah! Ah! Leonard! Ah! Ah! Can Perth Glory break their grand final hoodoo? Will this be third time lucky? Get behind the glory as they take out the Olympic Sharks. The NSL Grand Final, 3 o'clock Sunday. Hey! <laughs>
<laughs> I, the evil Dr. Peacock, will steal two cans color with my color ray. Yes. <laughs> Boys, how about a little breakfast? Ah, the cereal color is disappearing. Yours too, Uncle Toucan. Oh, my. Where did the... I thought you were missing. I thought you were missing. I left to get let out of the spot because you got kidnapped. No, not kidnapped. Catnap. I was asleep. That's what cats do. We nap. I'll nap you, you little hairy puff bag. You know what you put me through? I almost got eaten thanks to you. Well, oh, yeah? Well, my nerves are all a jangle from being out in this awful, scary world trying to find you. Wait. I found you. You're here. And we're together. And we're safe. And we're... About to get eaten by a lion. Be still, my heart. It's he. Oh, what shall I say? I've dreamed of this moment a thousand times, and now she's here. Now is my chance to finally stand before her like a man and say... Ow! You hurt me. Come on, Lenny. You can do this obstacle course. Hey, maybe you're right. I am getting through it faster than you. Actually, I'm lapping you for the second time. I should have put my gym shorts in the fireplace. Tallulah, where are you? Ow, oh, ow, oh, ow! Oh. Your claws are like little tiny meat hooks in my back. Cut me some slack. I'm a bird and I'm freaking out here. Yeah. Ooh, this looks like an exit. Or a dead end. <laughs> Hello, birdie. Tallulah's back in town. Help me, Charlie. Get her to stop. Yes. Yes, I will. Nobody terrorizes my best friend like that. Hey, you. Cat. Yeah. I can't do it. Her beauty bewitches me so. I can't find the words. Ow! How about these words? Don't eat my friend. Oh, dear. I am so very, very afraid. No, you're not. You're brave. You fought your fears. You left home and came all the way to this madhouse because you believed you could help me. So help me! You're right. I am brave. I'm not brave enough to talk to my lady love, but I can talk to someone else. Get up those tires! Forget it, Scott. I just can't do it. Um, uh, uh... Um, attention, all students. Uh, would, um, Leonard Helperman and Scott Ledready report to the principal's office? Please. Immediately! Pretty boy, Mr. Jolly, are here! We have to save them! Wrong! You have to save them! Oh, Jolly Horse! Hello! Little help, please! You have to do it, Leonard. And I know you can. Get in there and save those pets! I will! Hang on, guys! Here! Cats and breathments don't mix much, do they? You leave my bird alone. Tallulah, there you are. Oh, my poor Tallulah. Clearly you got locked in here and were brought to the brink of madness by starvation. And Leonard, you ran all the way here to save her. How did you know? Oh, let's just say I have a sixth sense about pets in danger. Thank you, Leonard Helperman. I'll never forget you for this. But touch my darling baby again, and you'll be suspended for a month. Oh, you're so cute. Oh, is that cool? Ow! That was my face, dear. <laughs> oh, Leonard, honey, I am so proud of you. <laughs> you had the fastest obstacle course time in school history. Thanks, Mom, but I didn't do it alone. It helps to have friends who believe in you. <laughs> Took the words right out of my mouth. Thanks for faking that Charlie horse. It was just the motivation I needed. Ah, uh, twas nothing. I knew that faking an injury would give you a... Ow! Because I knew... I'm all right. Ah, how? You close already? Thank you. Ah, ha, 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 ha. 
Discover how easy and cost-effective it is to extend onto your home. Plus, Graham shows an always greener star how to get her garden always greener. And a cheesy biscuit with a difference. All new Better Homes and Gardens, Tuesday 7.30. And then... On 2003's number one series, Room for Improvement, see how a simple carport can be transformed into a stylish entertainment area. It's really going to bring it to life. For all year round. All oh. new Room for Improvement, Tuesday at 8. our very special guest, the Muppets! Yay! Well, they, they were here a minute ago. Uh, Fozzie? Gonzo? Hello? The Muppets are now at McDonald's. Ten classic characters to collect over five weeks. One with every Happy Meal. Get there before they disappear again. For the luxury of apartment-style living at a comfortable price, try Emerald Court and Muse Apartment Scarborough. Our phone right now at Rendezvous, Observation City Hotel. Until Friday at Kmart, we're cutting 25% off men's, women's and children's clothing. Does not include underwear, socks, hosiery and sleepwear. No further discounts apply. So hurry in for a huge 25% off clothing and the lowest price is guaranteed store-wide. Kmart, cutting the cost of living. It's the sealed in goodness and flavour of new pedigree pouch that dogs really love. Want to go on a five-star holiday that costs next to nothing? Now you can afford luxury because Australia is on sale. That is insane. Take a dirt cheap dip that's different with Tom. There aren't too many people who can resist the charms of dolphins. Live the high life for less than half price with Shelley. No other hotel in Australia has hosted as many celebrities. Looking for the ride of your life? You could win this amazing holiday. When Toyota presents The Great Outdoors Monday. Is Madame satisfied? Totally, thanks. Two chicken strips, delicious satay sauce, mayo, lettuce and tomato on a fresh baked focaccia. Totally satisfying, only at Red Rooster. I found your new proposal on the printer. And I just wanted to apologise for what I said about your ideas being outdated, banal and boring at yesterday's board meeting. I was wrong. This is inspired stuff. This is exactly the sort of fresh thinking this company needs to move forward. Did someone pick something of mine off the printer? There it is. It's in our business school graduates. At St John Ambulance, we need you as much as you need us. Your continued support as an ambulance member will mean ongoing improvements and the expansion of our rural services. And while non-members could pay up to $300 per ambulance trip, your family's St John Ambulance cover is a small price to pay, which is nothing compared to the invaluable community service we provide. St John Ambulance. Saving lives, saving money. Go Harvey, go Harvey. 
for laid back value, look at our recliner lounge suite deals. The Karen three seater and two recliners in super soft fabric is only $17.99. Or the Lindemann three piece recliner lounge suite, great value at only $21.99. The Melbourne three piece recliner suite features generous backs and steel sprung seating for $27.99. And finally, the Vivian three seater and two recliners in all over leather for just $32.99. All this and much more from your furniture specialist. Across the state, from Calbarry in the north to Albany in the south, only one builder can offer you over 450 home designs from five of Perth's leading builders. J Corp, WA's largest country builder. Visit our website or call for a free colour brochure. One of the 15 people who work here is about to slip and be badly injured. It won't happen if the first person who sees the hazard takes action to fix it. This person is about to injure her back. It won't happen if she uses the right equipment. Watch out for each other and work safe. For the new First Step Guide, call 1800 429 273. Who has Australia's most fuel-efficient range of cars? And who has the four-wheel drive Terios at just 18,990 drive away? Terry Pittard Daihatsu. Daihatsu. Create a picture-perfect entrance. How to get the most flavour from your wine. And three easy steps to perfect pruning. Wow, to look a lot more productive and attractive. Plus a spicy Indian ice cream. All new Better Homes and Gardens, Tuesday, then at 8. 2003's number one series. Just keeps getting better and better. Completely changes the look of your rental flat without upsetting the landlord. And if you own your own home, great for you too. For under five and a half grand. All new Room for Improvement, Tuesday. You know you're doing things right, but the type of shopper you attract. She's from the competition and she's checking Cole's prices. I see her here all the time. <laughs> Until Wednesday, Target's taking 20% off underwear, socks and hosiery, excluding sleepwear. Take the sporty, go anywhere, RAV4, add over $3,000 worth of extra value and you've got the RAV4 Extreme. But this is a once a year event, so see your Toyota dealer now. Check out these great steel savings. Mama mate. Mama mate. Mama Roofing's mate. a bargain at up to 40% off. Save on patio tube, 35% off. Galvanised pipe is up to a whopping 60% off. And K-Rail is now up to a huge 30% off. Plus, look for loads more savings in the Medallia Steel Sale catalogue. Out now. Medallia Steel Steel the one. Mama mate. The developing brain of a baby is so fragile that shaking them, even for a few seconds, can cause serious brain damage. Babies break if you shake them. If you can't stop your baby crying, cry for help. Another one. Another one. Another one. More than one in three people who die in country car crashes aren't wearing them. Another one. That's why we're buckling down on seat belts. Grass weeds enter this paddock at their own risk. Targa High Voltage Grass Weed Control from DuPont. 
When you run a small business, you need all the help you can get. That's why we're here, to help, by doing business insurance over the phone with EasyBiz. You matter most is what we say. Bunbury Mitsubishi. You matter most in every way. Bunbury Mitsubishi. You matter most, most definitely. At Bunbury Mitsubishi. You matter most when buying new. West Coast Ashley Sampy has kicked a goal after the siren to draw their match against the Bulldogs at Subiaco today. The game we're lucky not to win, lucky not to lose, lucky we've got a draw. While the Dockers were blown away by a ported Amy Stadium to the tune of 49 points. Paints the picture in terms of where we're at and uh, we need to absorb that and learn from it. In today's other game, the Cats were too good for the Blues, winning by 40 points. Good night. Two murders. I killed that woman. Two men accused. I didn't kill anyone. Only this lawyer knows one guy is guilty of both. Yes. What do you do? I beg your pardon? If you sell out your clients. A client's trust is a client's trust. You destroy your career. I'm getting a very bad feeling. If you don't, an innocent man. I didn't kill her. Goes away for life. That's the truth. This one's a ripper. All new practice, Monday 9.30 after 24. You'll save every day at Coles. On Pantene shampoo or conditioner, 400 mils, 6.88 each, save $2.07. And Imperial Mandarin's great value at $2.25 a kilo. It costs less to shop at Coles. Kalgoorlie Boulder, winner of the GWN brand WA Top Tourism Town Award 2002. Home of Gold Rush Tours, winner of the Best Regional Tour and Transport Operator 2002. First in service, first in itinerary. Gold Rush Tours knows the gold fields. Tourism Kalgoorlie Boulder, voted the best holiday destination in the West. Call now for your free holiday planner. For a limited time, KFC's Ultimate Three Piece Meat is back. Three pieces of our famous chicken, chips, a dinner roll, potato and gravy, Pepsi. Perfect place for a picnic. And a king size Cadbury picnic. You'll think all your lunches have come at once. Achieve the ultimate in digital home entertainment and save at West Coast Hi-Fi's huge doorbuster sale. Save $200 on quality receivers. Pioneer for $5.99, Sony at a low $7.99, and this feature-rich denim now only $9.99. Get a free Toshiba DVD player with this Bose Lifestyle 8 home theater system now only $26.99. And save $600 on this Toshiba widescreen rear pro and go digital TV with a free set top box or DVD VCR combo. Why compromise when you can have the best? From a home entertainment specialist, West Coast Hi-Fi. The $22 million Lotto Super Draw this Saturday is one of the biggest ever. Some people will do anything to keep it quiet. Sony Music's Hot 20. Hot CDs under $20 plus your chance to win hundreds of great Sony prizes. Look for the Hot 20 sticker on Chicago, Celine Dion, Dixie Chicks, Train, Bruce Springsteen, Destiny's Child, Michael Jackson, Macy Gray, plus classic double albums, Forrest Gump and Billy Joel. Whiny Hot 20 CD and you could win one of 20 PS2s, 20 Sony Ericsson mobile phones, 20 Sony Discman and heaps more. Sony Music's Hot 20. Great music under $20 at your local music store now. This one looks good. Let's call Daddy. Daddy. Mommy and I found our new home. Well, I'd better have a look then. Daddy! This is going to be my room. Oh, looks perfect to me. And I've arranged for an LJ Hooker home loan. He needs a new home too. LJ Hooker, you Thank you, Mr. Hooker. Not anymore.
just the place you fear to go. The junk pile at the side of the house. Bingo! Now, the perfect solution for those odds and ends. We're turning a very blank canvas into an absolute masterpiece. All new Ground Force Wednesday. Then at 8, he's moving out of home. I don't know anything about houses. And he hasn't got a clue. How do you see that you're going to be paying the rent? I don't know. Really haven't really thought about, thought about it. It's a lesson in what not to do when renting. All new Hot Property, Wednesday at 8. Another one. Another one. Another one. More than one in three people who die in country car crashes aren't wearing them. Another one. That's why we're buckling down on seat belts. Audiocom Albany, Bunbury and Kalgoorlie's big brand sale. Thump and Sony, Pioneer and Kicker subwoofers from 99 bucks. Pioneer and Panasonic MP3 CD tuners from 349. Pioneer's radio cassette and six disc CD stacker only 499. The latest CD tuners, Sony, Pioneer, Panasonic from 269. Wow. wow. Audiocom, 12 big stores across WA. We won't be beaten on price or service. Correct tyre pressures are an important part of your car's safety. Too low causes excessive wear on the outside, too high they'll wear unevenly. Check them regularly. Better still get an expert to check them over for free at your local Bridgestone Tyre Centre. McDonald's uncovered. So, you only use fresh milk in your thick shakes? Yep, fresh milk. You sure? Any more milk and they'd move. It's good to know. Any more milk and they'd move. Massive pool table sale now on at Southwest Pool Tables. Rush in for these fantastic pool table specials. Seven foot tables, thirteen fifty, and eight foot tables, eighteen fifty. Plus, both come with free accessories. Get into Southwest Pool Tables, Blair Street, Bunbury. Westwood Timbers is holding a massive timber auction at Sotiko Manjimup Saturday, June 14th. Flooring, decking, skirtings, dry jarra and sleepers in packed lots all go under the hammer. Auction starts 9.30. Be early Saturday, June 14th at Sotiko Manjimup. Joe has found someone new. I'm gonna be uh, moving in with him. Yeah, will PJ let her go? I'm sure you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. All new Blue Healers Wednesday. Yeah, I think that's enough. That's enough makeup. This program brought to you by Sony Music Hot 20 CDs, Coles, Coastal Automotive Centre, and a reminder that we're buckling down on seatbelts. Good evening. The Liberal Party faithful have given a hero's reception to the Prime Minister at the party's national convention. Mr Howard detailed plans to curb the Senate's power to block legislation. Only Treasurer Peter Costello appeared less than impressed. Outside the conference, the father of alleged Taliban fighter David Hicks campaigned for his son's release from US military custody. A gun battle near the Gaza Strip has dealt a blow to peace negotiations between Israelis and Palestinians. Seven people were killed as three Palestinian militants attacked an army post. Sydney stockbroker Rene Rifkin has collapsed in Silverwater Jail just one day into his first weekend of nine months periodic detention. And two humpbacks had a whale of a time on the Gold Coast, moving north on their annual migration. That's all from 7 News tonight. Our next bulletin is sunrise from 6am.
In case you missed tonight's cash three draw, the numbers are nine, three, and nine. Cash three, easy to play, good luck. Create a picture-perfect entrance. And three easy steps to perfect pruning. Plus a spicy Indian ice cream. All new Better Homes and Gardens, Tuesday. It's the prince and the pauper, the fairy tale of the nobody that suddenly is somebody. And he's through to his first Grand Slam final. Martin Verkirk, the hero of Holland, versus the man named after a king with the clay court pedigree to match. Juan Carlos Ferrero is taking aim for another shot at a Roland Garros title. The Spaniard with the silky skills and the man of a thousand faces. It's all come down to this, the 2003 French Open men's final from Roland Garros. 14 days of the world's most testing tennis is about to produce a new Grand Slam champion. Hello, thanks for joining us on Men's Final Day. Tonight, two very different players bring the promise of a very entertaining end to the tournament. Martin Verkirk has defied logic to be here. The Dutchman describing his first time appearance in a Grand Slam final as a miracle. On the flip side, Juan Carlos Ferrero carried the tag of pre-tournament favourite. The Spaniard arguably the world's best clay court player. Well, for the past two weeks, he's been calling all the action courtside at Roland Garros. With his predictions from Paris, here's Sandy Roberts. It's one of the great sporting venues. It's the centrepiece of Roland Garros. I'm talking about Court Philippe Chartrier. Over the years, it's hosted some wonderful matches. And today's men's final could be another. Welcome to what should be a wonderful day's tennis. And if by any chance you believe in miracles, then maybe today you'll be cheering on the man we know as the Big Dutchman, Martin Verkirk. He roared into our hearts just four days ago in the quarterfinals against Carlos Moya. There it is. He then roared into the final, downing Guillermo Coria in straight sets. And he's through to his first Grand Slam final. Two weeks ago, people were saying, Martin who? It's Martin Verkirk from the Netherlands. How it comes is, uh, I cannot explain this. I mean, this is a dream. This is actually a little bit of a joke because... <laughs> For some of the world's best left in his wake, it is certainly no joke. The man with the serve to match his massive frame and bulging eyes has lost in the first round in his only two previous Grand Slam outings. Now he's a win away from a French Open title. I changed my tennis life around from a nobody to probably somebody. And as he has since the opening round, Verkirk goes in with nothing to lose. It's unbelievable, and for me, it's, it's a miracle. John Fitzgerald, it really is an amazing story. It really is. This young man overnight, Sandy, has almost become a superstar. Nobody knew of him before he came into this no. event. And in the space of six matches, he's gone from a relatively unknown player to maybe the biggest name in, in men's tennis. I get the sneaking feeling that you think he can win? I definitely do. I think he's got the game to do it. He's proven that already in this tournament. He's beaten some very good players. And he's got technique, particularly on his serve, that holds up under pressure. When he's faced with serving out matches, he has done it with ease. He did it against Reiner Schuttler in the round of 16 match. He did it against Carlos Moyer in the quarterfinals. And then again against Guillermo Correa in the semifinals. He didn't buckle under pressure. I think he can win. Well, the man that stands between him and the title is Spain's Juan Carlos Ferrero. A man with a classic clay court pedigree. Every day for the past 12 months, Juan Carlos Ferrero has been thinking of this moment. Ferrero through to his second Roland Garros final. 
is in straight sets. Fifth cup. Not just to defeat a fellow Spaniard in Albert Costa, who surprisingly shattered his dream in last year's final, but more importantly, to get another crack at a French Open title. I have uh, a lot of matches inside of me, and uh, I think uh, this is very important. He's made the semi-finals four straight years, the final in the past two, and many say he's on the verge of a clay court era. But first, he needs to open his Grand Slam account. The question is, will Ferrero's classic clay court game be enough to take the sting out of Vekirk's massive serve? Well, there's no doubt at the moment, John Alexander, that Spain's Juan Carlos Ferrero is the best clay quarter in the world. But against someone like Martin Verkirk, is his best going to be good enough? Well, it's a very interesting final. So different to last year where he was carrying the weight of expectation against Costa. Had he played his best, we all thought he would have won. He didn't. The big question is this year, if he plays his best, will he be good enough? In my opinion, if Verkirk plays as he did in the semi-final, he is going to be too good. Well, there's one thing for certain, J.A., like the women's, there's going to be a new name on the trophy. And we're about to find out. Sandy Roberts and John Alexander in Paris. Well, the players are due to walk out onto centre court very soon. We'll be going live to the 2003 men's final at Roland Garros very shortly. Don't go away. I'm not here to be beautiful. Want to go on a five-star holiday that costs next to nothing? Now you can afford luxury because Australia is on sale. That is insane. Take a dirt cheap dip that's different with Tom. There aren't too many people who can resist the charms of dolphins. Live the high life for less than half price with Shelley. No other hotel in Australia has hosted as many celebrities. Looking for the ride of your life? You could win this amazing holiday. When Toyota presents The Great Outdoors Monday. No. Are you stuck in the habit of adding things to your breakfast cereal? See ya. Bye. Kellogg's Just Right tastes so good. You just mm. don't need to. Just right, just the way it is. Here are the Pantene winners. Who are they? I'm a psychologist and a mum, and I'm into sports that really stress my hair. Oh, tangles, tangles and frizz. It was ratty. I tried every hair product, you name it. I was skeptical, but I was genuinely surprised at the difference Pantene made. It's really smooth, doesn't tangle. People always said it was long. Now they say how healthy and shiny it is. Thanks to Pantene, every day's a great hair day. If you want to stay warm this winter, don't miss the big pink bat sale at King's Insulation. Buy now and King's will install 32% better bats at no extra cost. What an offer. 32% better bats, an obligation free quote, and this week, King's have slashed the cost of installation by 20%. Why be cold? For a warmer winter and lower heating costs, don't miss King's big pink bat sale. Call now on 131 224. And remember, pink is king. Sportivo with full sports body kit, alloy wheels and cockpit style interior. It looks amazing.
You know you're doing things right. By the type of shopper you attract. She's from the competition and she's checking Cole's prices. I see her here all the time. <laughs> back with this year's defining rock album, Birds of Prey, featuring the single heaven, live Birds of Prey, out now. Yes, what a moment to savour for Justine Enna Ardenne, becoming the first Belgian to win a Grand Slam title. Just before we get to the men's final, it's coming up in a few minutes. Let's take a quick look back at how Justine created her own slice of tennis history. Slam final in sensational fashion. Wins don't become any more emphatic than that. Six love, six four. It's very hard to find the, the right words because it's very special emotion and I really can't tell you now how I'm feeling because it's more than I could, could think winning a Grand Slam, especially here at the French Open. And uh, I can't realize what, right now what I did, but I think tomorrow is going to be easier. That's the only thing you can do if you're not playing your best tennis is, is you know, just focus on, on your game and just trying to, to, you know, not give really easy, easy mistakes. And, um, but, and that's the only thing you can do is just fight until the end. And, and at the end, if she's good enough, then that ends it, you know, so there's nothing else you can do about it. Well, the players are just preparing to walk out onto court, but whoever emerges victorious in the men's final tonight, the 2003 French Open has certainly lived up to its reputation of throwing up surprises. Just as quickly as the top-ranked players tumbled, the unseeded ones went from strength to strength. And one man who's seen it all at Roland Garros over the past 20 years or so is tennis legend John McEnroe. Sandy Roberts caught up with him. John, good to talk to you on the Seven Network. Uh, two weeks ago, a lot of people were saying, Martin who? Now everyone knows. How impressed have you been by the big Dutchman? Oh, I mean, this guy's uh, the, the true Rocky uh, of, of tennis right now. I mean, he's uh, bordering on being the heavyweight champion. The best part is, is that uh, he's toiled. You know, he's been through the minor leagues. He worked his way up. I saw him the first time myself at the US Open last year playing Roddick, and for a couple sets, I said, this guy's 120 or 170 in the world. He started the year, he was 250 in the world. I'm saying, this guy can play. If this guy gets in condition and, and, and starts believing in himself, uh, he can beat a lot of guys, but never in my wildest dreams did I expect this guy to go all the way to the finals. Am I correct in saying that you picked Juan Carlos Ferrero uh, to win the final? I, I, I picked him to win the tournament, and, and, and I still believe that's gonna happen. But uh, what makes it more interesting is you got a guy, a total unknown, that can really play. And the contrast is interesting. I mean, he's obviously a big hitter, and he's going to attack and be aggressive against the classic clay court style. Can I talk to you about Leighton Hewitt? What do you think is missing from the Hewitt game that he requires to take him to the next step on clay? Well, that, the, 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 the movement doesn't come naturally to him. I mean, he's, like, likes a guy, he's a guy who likes to have his footing, and he's extremely fast. But he doesn't move and slide as well as some of these other players. I mean, he himself has said he didn't play on it barely at all until he was 16. And, and his confidence isn't the same. But it, as he gets more comfortable with the movement, which is I'm not 100% sure is going to happen, he's got to become more aggressive when, when given the opportunity and, and uh, be able to close matches out. But like the, the match he played against Rebrader here, where he was up easily, 
found himself in a fight, but still was up 3 love in the fifth and should have won that match. And to get to the next step, he's got to show these guys that he's able to like take the initiative when necessary. Do you think he will win on clay? Here? I, I, as young and as good as he is, I wouldn't count him out. But these guys, I mean, this, these these guys are way more comfortable. And it's it's going to be an uphill battle for him. I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be uh, the toughest tournament for him to win. Well, the time has arrived. It's McKirk versus Ferrero for the right to be men's champion of Roland Garros 2003. Your commentators, John Fitzgerald, John Alexander and Sandy Roberts. Has been some rain earlier today. For Kirk trying to steady himself after nervously walking out on the court, Philippe Chartrier already out. Here's Juan Carlos Ferrero. And umpire Pascal Maria umpiring his second straight final. This is a great thrill for him. He wanted to be a tennis player, but uh, incurred a knee injury at the age of 14. And since 99, he's joined the umpiring federation into his second straight final. And this is a moment these players will always remember. Juan Carlos Ferrero has been here. He's tried to do it last year. Fitzy, he couldn't. Does that put him under any added pressure? Well, I think there's more pressure on him because the majority of people expect him to win. Uh, the expectation for him is that he, he is the best clay quarter in the world at the moment. He's been here before, hasn't succeeded in the ultimate match at Roland Garros. He's also been in the semi-finals twice prior to that. And look, I think though, the more often you put yourself into this position, the better chance eventually you'll be able to handle the occasion. And for, for Kirk, it is an unknown situation, something that is completely foreign to him. No one knows, probably including himself, how he's going to handle the day. Having said that, J.A., he's probably the one with absolutely nothing to lose. Yes, as uh, Martin said prior to this match, it is unbelievable. He said he, he doesn't want to say it's unbelievable, but it truly is. And he has absolutely nothing to lose. Had never won a match in Grand Slam competition prior to this event. First time at the French. win lost record this year, 20 to 14. And it has skyrocketed over the past two weeks. Ferrero actually is assured of a number one spot on the champions race even before this final and Verkirk who currently shares joint eighth place on the race standings with Felix Mantia if he wins today he'll go into seventh place while just two weeks ago on the opening day of Roland Garros he was in joint 30th place so what a fortnight it has been for him while Ferrero four visits to Roland Garros two finals his time must be near now 23 years of age he's got nine titles to his credit and of those nine Fitzy seven on clay and a marvelous Roland Garros record 22 matches just three losses yeah he is the best clay quarter around he's proven that over the last uh, two years